and hello again and here we are back in Jeff's shed and we're looking at the almost finished almost finished aluminium swing arm that we're making for my Harley Softail um, and it's been a while now we started it in I think uh, January but it's been stopping and starting it's been a rush for it and uh, we are finally getting there and it's pretty much finished um, as you can see we move it here we've got the adjuster blocks in and just as there a bit tricky to have this on the uh, Miller to line drill it through here, through here, make sure the uh, threads are all lined up so it doesn't bind up when you squeak back and two. Uh, this has got a temporary um, threaded bar here just to hold it on in place, ready for it being welded. And now looking at the front of the swing arm, we see that the holes for these shot mount bolts have been drilled and tapped. And in fact, these are not metric, they're imperial, I think they're half inch. And these bolts are special bolts, they're shouldered so that when you've tightened them all up, uh, you won't crush the shocks which go forward beneath the gearbox. Um, we also lost some weight here, made it um, as light as we could and this piece is actually bolted to this back piece. Now on the original version in steel, all this is one big steel piece and you can't um, move it or anything but we've done it in two pieces so that we can um, shim it and move this, this, these bolts backwards and forwards to alter the ride height. So. So what's next is, oh, hang on, what, what's next is tea. tea. Tea's just arrived, so, <laughs> so we'll just have a little break while I drink tea, and then we'll continue with our discussions about this swing arm. Okay, so just a little quick tea break, and um, yeah, so next step is to get it welded up. And if you remember, we've got these V-grooves added here to help the weld penetrate, to make it look nice, and we're gonna weld all the way around here, uh, so that should be fine, and also we're gonna weld this base piece here, this cross piece, to these side plates, so it's going to be welded here and here. Um, once that's done, I guess I've got to decide what finish to give this particular swing arm. Shall I polish it? Shall I anodize it? Shall I powder coat it? And at the moment, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. It really depends um, what bag it's going to go on. If it goes on my Merch 131, I may not polish it because it'll be a pain to maintain. I spend enough time as it is polishing that bike and trying to polish the inside of this thing would be a nightmare so I might go for anodizing hard anodizing anyway and then just leave these adjuster block areas as polished aluminium so you can see it's actually made from um, solid aluminium um, but if it's going to go on a brand new bike then all options are open god knows what it's going to end up like however we're not quite finished yet it looks like we're finished but we're not there yet because we've got to add one more element and that is the under bracing. So let me just spin it over and we can explain what we've been discussing and uh, what might happen next before the whole damn thing's finished. So let's just refocus. Okay, so Jeff's helped me out. He's holding this thing up so we can see this area here. And on the original steel version, we had a brace coming down here and into here. Now it's a bit different because we've altered the way this base piece um, works and looks so we can't quite follow that same route and also it, it was a tubular steel um, tube that went like that again that would look stupid on here we can't do that so we've been thinking about some options and looking through Jeff's stack of bits and bobs and aluminium bar and whatever we've got scrap. this yeah, scrap, yeah. we've got this piece here which I think is almost, I don't think it's quite an inch square. Seven, eight square, square. square. it's an yeah. odd size. So it could go, if, if, you, if you imagine this has been um, machined, it, it could be welded something like that. But for me it looks a bit heavy and... Um, I and think yeah. it looks ideal. Yeah, but what I want to do is have it something like this kind of width, but a bit narrower. So sure enough, Jeff has found a similar piece. Inch. This one's a bit... Um, that's inch by half. Inch by half, and I think that's a bit better. It looks a bit better, I think. So if you imagine, hopefully you can see this. Um, the brace will be something like this, going like that, and then we've got to work out a way of... We need a, a bend on it. Yeah, there. because it's got to bend in to, to clear the uh, tyre, which is what the original does. So the original, however, bends in a lot more because it attaches to this cross brace here. But we're not do that. We're going to um, weld it to this bit here because all this will be welded up anyway. So it'll be pretty damn solid. Well, that's the same gauge as that plate. Yeah. So oh, right. it'd, it'd look, if you could get it to that, yeah, it'd yeah. look. Because then it could come yeah. down and then we weld it up and look pretty damn cool. It'd look good. So this would need to be angled, obviously, something like that. And then it needs to be bent in here. And because it's thinner, it should be easier to bend. I mean, bending that would be uh, bending almost that, impossible. Yeah. But, but, but with this, we can get some heat on it can and uh, bend it, hopefully. It, bend it, yeah. yeah, and it shouldn't crack. So that's the current plan. 
we need two of them of course. Um, I'm not sure this will be done before we send the whole lot off to be welded. I'm tempted just to get the damn thing welded now and then we'll work on this next uh, next week perhaps. Well Jeff, he's going to have to weld around here before he puts that in yes, anyway. Yeah. So, so I think I, stage one, stage yeah. two, it also means I can uh, get it done quickly because it's less work for Jeff to do. Not this Jeff, the other Jeff. <laughs> Jeff to weld it with a G. <laughs> I can perhaps see him on Saturday and um, get, get him to do that quick job and then we'll bring it back and then finish off this perhaps next week and then we're done then uh, then after that I don't know what happens I'll probably sit on a shelf for six months while I work out whether I want to build a new bike or fit this to uh, my current bike but overall we just moved this out of the way so we're not going to scratch anything uh, I think it's looking pretty damn good I mean when we started this I didn't even think it might work um, it's come out yeah I actually just weighed it and it comes in at um, just shy of 19 pounds which is a bit more than I thought but then again we've also got the weight of this heavy bar here which is just in for the time being to brace the back end of it before it gets welded so I think we will lose a pound or two there's a couple of pounds like yeah. I say so as I say compare that to 34 pounds for the original and we're looking at half the weight which is what I want Man, to you do know what we can get off here in oh, yeah. you, yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll add on in the weld so yeah yeah we're, we're, yeah we will lose a bit here the but odds of getting it any lighter now yeah. is yeah, yeah pretty remote yeah yeah anyway it's still it's heavy for a swing arm for the sports bike but it's bloody light for a swing arm for a harley oh, soft tail yeah. and that's what i wanted it's also going to be bloody strong as well this thing ain't going to bend um so yeah um so come back hopefully tomorrow or the next day we will have it welded and in the meantime we got some tea to drink so uh thanks for watching and cheers okay so here we are at jeff's with a g not a j is it on yeah yeah and we've had a slight problem because when you put it on your welding table, which is a flat table, the extra surface en en engineered flat, it was rocking, it was rocking, and uh, that means it's not straight and not level. So, a bit of a problem there. So, what we're doing now is we're just loosening off the bolts which hold it all together. No, 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 they're not supposed to be. And hitting it and basically seeing if we can get it straight. And that might seem a bit crude, but at the end of the day, if it's 10 mil out or a tenth of a mil out here, it's going to be a millimetre out here. So, it's going that? To, yeah, and that seems a lot better now. If you clamp it down now, we clamp it down. This has been loosened off, and really, these are only in to hold it in place while you weld it. So, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it could have been knocked when it's in, been in my car. Who knows? Um, and so, it's all welded up. It's um, it's yeah. just pulling every time you. Every time you tighten them up, that's yeah, all. Yeah. Because, like you say, the the how are they? I think I think the countersink. Yeah, I think the countersinks aren't quite spot on. I mean, we're talking a tenth of a millimetre, so uh, hopefully that's better, isn't it? It's not moving now. Yeah, but we've got to tighten them up again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the joys of uh, making things. A lot, but it was rocking quite a lot before. Let's just turn it over. Yeah. Okay, so we're still tweaking this. We put a straight edge between the pivot points, this is where the bearings live at the front, and that's the key point. And it looks like now that edge is level and parallel with the spindle here, which is what we need. Everything else doesn't really matter too much, it's just really for show. Um, we're just going to tweak it a bit more, make sure everything's okay before we weld it. So once it's welded, we can't go back. So uh, if it's wrong then, it'll be wrong forever. We get in there. Which one? Yeah, I'm just going to... It's only doing it by eye, but... Before I could see a difference and now I can't, so... Yes, that's what I'm that, saying. You could before, you could see a difference before, yeah. now you can't see yeah. a difference. So I think uh, we'll go with that. Panic over, hopefully, and uh, it won't move when we're welding it, but we'll see. Okay, so it's making sure everything's aligned and level before we start welding. I'm going to put some tack welds on here to stop it from moving. And then, it, and then we'll do a full weld. Yeah. Okay, great. What we're going to do is a free heat, take, take the moisture. Right. So you can see the moisture there now. So yeah, it's coming out. It's in the condensed. So we're 
didn't do that, what would happen? You know, you'd get velocity in your goal. Look at that one, so... Just taking the chill off it. Especially on the winter morning yeah. at the end of April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the sun's come out now, we're doing alright. Okay, Jeff, so that's the first part done. We've welded on this, this base piece and you weld it all the way around, that's great. Next, we've got to weld these arms on. And as you can notice, we've put a groove here for you. We're thinking of you, Jeff, we're thinking of you. Make it, yeah, making your life easier, as usual. So that's next, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Jeff's now preheating this particular area before he welds it. And the reason for that, Jeff, is what? What's the reason for doing this? We're doing a free heat. So I can keep the, the range down on the amps. On right. The right. So it's quite a big lump, so, 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 you, need, better so you need less ampage when it's already hot. Yeah, and, and it's always better with a free heat. Yeah, yeah. On this sort of material. On yeah. The problem is it's such a big lump of metal, it takes a fair bit of heat to uh, yeah, get warm up. Yeah. Start going. Okay, so won't film this, it might take another 10 minutes to get this done, so uh, we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so that's the first well done. I won't touch it because it's very hot, but that looks really neat. No need to sort of grind that down or touch it, I'll just leave yeah. it as it is to show how it's been made. So, uh, let's carry on. Okay, Jeff, we're done. I think we are, it's still aligned, thank God. And, uh, all's well, it ends well. Yeah, we use this as a sort of um, dating point to make sure we were level and parallel with the rear spindle. And it still is, thank God. Good look. Yeah. Yeah, well, anyways, as well as I can see, uh, which is good enough for me. Yeah. In fact, I think it's better than it was. If you um, close one eye, yeah. you can always see. Yeah. Yeah, it's Actually. running parallel. Right, great stuff. And now here we are back home again, and I've just got the bike out to do a comparison of the new swing arm against the old steel swing arm that's on the bike at the moment. And what I'm looking at is this under brace here, and the way we might replicate that on this new swing arm. And it won't be quite so easy because we have to make sure that we have enough clearance so that the under brace doesn't hit this part of the frame here. Um, when we modified the swing arm a few months ago, we had to put a big notch in this, um, in this area of the brace here to make sure it doesn't hit the frame. So that's something to bear in mind. And because we've modified the way this base area works, um, we can't quite replicate it the way it's been done on the original steel swing arm. So that's something you need to be wary of. And I think what we end up doing is having a sort of S-shaped uh, brace, which comes um, from down here. And it'll have to do a little S-shape to um, both come in and also avoid hitting the frame here. So that's something to be wary of and something I need to check on before we actually make and weld in those braces on this new swing arm. That of course assumes that this swing arm is going to be fitted to that bike, which it may or may not do, I'm not sure yet. It may end up um, being used on a brand new project, but we'll see. Yeah, so, so far so good. We've still not got to the end yet, but we are getting close. Although I must admit, I did have a bit of a panic when it turned out that these two spars weren't quite aligned, they were slightly out. When I brought it, it was Jeff the welder, and he checked out the alignment. But luckily that was just a case of tweaking these bolts to make sure everything was aligned before he welded it up for the final time. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. And that's time I had a well look of tea. So thanks for watching and cheers.